The LEGO Batcave Shadow Box turned out to be a way better product than I anticipated, you know? I looked at it and I was like, okay, a Batcave built onto a giant black box of bricks? LEGO is probably running out of ideas for Batman sets. So going into the build I had no expectations whatsoever, but then I was completely blown away. First things first, the box is way heavier than it looks and it has this nice glossy finish for the model and logos that the background doesn't. Inside you'll find four instruction booklets which kinda helps understand the weight of the box and inside there's a very cool in-depth story of how the set came to life and whenever a new minifigure or special feature of the set is completed there's also an extra bit of info about them. Talking about the minifigures there's seven of them including two Batmans not exclusive to this set. Now it may sound weird having two but the explanation given is that the soft cape Batman is meant to fit the Batmobile, the chair by the Batcomputer and the vault while the hard cape one is meant for display as it doesn't fit the previous places. The other five minifigures as seen in Batman Returns from 1992 are Bruce Wayne and Alfred carrying some tea, Catwoman, Max Shrek and the Penguin, all exclusive to this set. There's also a Batmobile that kinda surprised me for how big it was. The cockpit area features a new 4 studs wide curved windscreen I've never seen before and the space inside is rather tight, but does fit the Batman minifigure. These air intakes to the sides are great details, though they keep going in as I usually pick the model like this. The back wings were brick built, which I actually really liked as opposed to previous versions of the car that used pre mold the wing elements and in the back there's the flame coming out that actually rotates when you drive it around. The front is instantly recognizable and looking at the model from this side here the gear will be hard not to miss. Looks terrible but does trigger the machine guns which is a neat play feature. If you really like this Batmobile but aren't willing to spend the $400 to buy this massive set there will be a standalone Batmobile model releasing this August that looks very very similar. The shadow box however is a thing on its own. The color scheme fits the owner with the black and very dark grey pieces and the front facing cutout in the shape of the Batman logo is great fan service. The use of these curved bricks for some of the shaping was great and so was seeing these very rare inverted slopes in black. Actually peeking into the box and getting to see all of the details is cool, there's a few bats hanging in the foreground layer of the box, but the whole thing is actually inched and can be opened which makes it far easier to see everything up close. This side has a few supports and lights up here as well as some rock formations, stalagmites and stalactites, especially at the ground floor. This wall here with these large chunks of rock formations wasn't that fun to build, but maybe due to being way too similar to the El Dorado Fortress rock formations I built just a few weeks ago that I didn't enjoy all that much. In the middle there's this raised platform for the Batmobile with a bunch of lights at the base and above it another brick built Batman logo which was a super clever building technique with two chunks of pieces that we just slide here not connected in any way and held in place by a few wedge plates. There's an actual gate for the Batmobile to go in and out of the cave that can be raised by pushing it up like these and that can be lowered by just pushing this brick built button. Another neat play function that the set has a bunch more of. The platform does not fit the Batmobile with its flame connected while the gate is closed so we need to take it out and place it on a hidden spot on the back of the set which admittedly is the worst looking side of the old model. The back wall of the cave is where most of the details are. By the Batmobile platform there's a complete set of tools for repair, towards the left the same style of rock formations and a ladder leading up. The first platform has the Bat computer with a bunch of monitors and dials, unfortunately stickers, a small chair here and a larger one for Batman that actually spins by cranking a knob in the back. I really love these simple features that add so much play to sets and as you're probably noticing there's a few more things in store for us, the next one being the ability to switch the images on the three screens by the wall like these, going from the penguin shots to Catwoman and back. The way it works is so simple but again so 
clever. A big sticker on a 8x16 tile is built onto this structure with a few Technic rack elements up top that slides into this hole here. We then add the Technic gear connected to the knob in the back and the mechanism is ready with the holes on the wall allowing us to see just enough for the screen effect. Brilliant. Up top a few holes of the cave where three extra beds can be seen and with the set having 10 of them that's probably a record. The second platform is the vault where the bed suit can be stored and as you're probably guessing there's also a play feature here to open and close the vault triggered once again by one of the knobs in the back. The set comes with a transparent minifigure head for you to display just the bat suit inside the vault and for an extra dramatic effect a light brick can also be triggered from the back shining on top of the bat suit in a very cool manner. The last platform doesn't look like much at first but again turning the last knob on the back will open the armory door side Ways revealing four of Batman's Batarangs and the Bat Claw. Another neat and simple play feature that works in a very similar way as the screens down the first platform. I completely disregarded this set when it came out, as it just looked to me like a big, boring black Lego box, but it turned out to be so much more than that. The play features once again have the power to turn a static display model into an object that is a lot more appealing, something brilliantly done on the Indiana Jones Temple of the Golden Idol set as well. The model, apart from that particular rock section, was incredibly enjoyable to build, as you're stacking lots of basic regular bricks, something we don't do as often with recent releases that feels in some ways a true LEGO building experience, if that makes any sense. The amount of rather large basic bricks also explains the unexpected heavy weight of the box. Despite the large size, especially when open, it is narrow enough to fit most bookshelves, making it a great display piece and the only real downside that could keep people away from getting it is the price. $400 is a lot of money for a single time LEGO purchase, even considering the decent price per piece ratio of 10 cents a piece for a 4000 piece LEGO model. Without any kind of expectations for this set, I have to say that I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. Something I can't really say about the Little Mermaid's Royal Clamshell set, but that's for another video.